In this example, we shall cover the X lookup feature and the filter feature. These are two new functions in the later versions of Office 365 for Excel. So first of all, let's have a look at our spreadsheet, our worksheet called the data sheet. First of all, on the left hand side in columns A through to G, we have a list of data, of part numbers basically, across warehouses with their properties, as you can see. Now the XLOOKUP function is described also in the text box and the filter function in another text box. But first of all, let's have a look at XLOOKUP. Now this is the long awaited feature. It's effectively a replacement for the VLOOKUP, which has served Excel well and businesses well over the years, and the HLOOKUP too. So let's see an example of this. First of all, let's have a look at the feature, the formula itself in K2. So here we're trying to find the stock quantity. The XLOOKUP consists of a number of arguments. In this case, it's got four. First of all, we're trying to find I2, a part number, PCC 11070, in a range of data in column B, from B2 to B24. If it finds the match, and that's the default, it'll then return the appropriate first set of data in columns F through to G, which is the stock quantity and the stock value. So effectively, we're trying to find here PCC 11070 down column B. We can find it and pick up the 100 for the stock quantity and the 100 pounds for the stock value. As you can see there, 100 stock quantity and 100 stock value. And that's not a problem. Now, the XLOOKUP does have the extra advantage of having, instead of an error message, which you tend to get with the HLOOKUP or VLOOKUP of, of hash NA, the message no part found. So we'll now try this. So instead of a valid part over here, we'll just type in random set of characters. And as you can see, no part found. So that's the H, that's the H lookup and V lookup replaced if you effectively in one operation, one function called X lookup. We then got a second example in K3. Now in K3, we've got another example of an X lookup. We're trying to find out here the warehouse. And as you can see, we're looking for a warehouse called Farnham. We're looking again, this time in the range of data, I3, which is um, PCC11072, trying to find out the warehouse. We tried to look up that in column B, and we're trying to find the warehouse from column A, to so the left-hand side, if you like, of the value. And this is an advantage over VLOOKUP, whereby you have to go from the left-hand side of a table and pick up the right-hand column, not the left-hand column, as it says below. And as you can see there, 11072 picks up Farnham. Else, a message, no warehouse found. So once again, we'll type in uh, a wrong part number and we get no warehouse found. So that's just two examples of XLOOKUP. I'm sure you'll find your own. So let's turn our attention now to the live function called filter. This really is very good as well. And here we have a filter function in cell O2. So let's click on O2. It's a function called filter, which searches for a value in N2. And N2, of course, holds a value Bristol, the cell to be changed. So if in column A, you find an occurrence of Bristol, then all the data from A2 to G24 will be shown. The warehouse, the part number, the item class, unit measure, etc. As you can see across here. So we're looking for Bristol and it shows all the occurrences for Bristol in column A, wherever the record for N2, which is Bristol, is found. So let's try another one. Let's type in Newcastle. And a live filter takes place. And as you can see there, the records for Newcastle are now filtered. If we type in something which cannot be found, Manchester, we get no warehouse found. So that there is effectively your filter function in Excel.